Hey guys, so you join me today in the kitchen, um, something a little bit different, natural daylight. Um, and I need to build some rocks to go into the scenic area that I'm going to be working on. I have built rocks before, I've used the Woodland Scenics products. Uh, I did it on my last layout and they worked out pretty well. So I'm going to use them again. And the last time I made them, all I had was one of these Woodland Scenic moulds that I picked up. Um, I think I bought it from Hobbycraft, thinking back. Uh, and a tub of this, um, casting plaster, Cinerama, I'm pretty sure it's made by Woodland Scenics and it's the same stuff. But um, this was what I used last time, so I still got half a tub of this left. Uh, hopefully it's alright, it hasn't been used for a couple of years, but we'll soon find out. Um, now, I also wanted some different rocks. So these are kind of like an, I think they were called in bank. Um, these are quite sharp for engage. Now the good thing is you can only half fill these up if you want them to be not to be so deep. Um, so that's definitely what we're going to be doing. But in addition to that I went on the internet and I picked up this. Um, so this is a rock face. Uh, again it's part of the uh, Woodland Scenics range and it's product number is C1248. And now you can buy Woodland Scenics ready rocks where they're already made for you, but it works out quite an expensive way to do it. Uh, especially if you like to change your layout and change the scenics and that kind of thing, you're going to have to keep buying them because I would imagine they're very difficult to take off because uh, they're plaster and you're going to be plastering them onto your layout. So I bought this, this is new, and in addition to this, I also bought the Rock Faces Learning Kit, and that's product number LK951. The reason I bought this was because it seemed to be quite a good value way of getting everything I needed in one kit, all nice and simple. And if we open it up and take a look at what we have inside the pack. So we've got instructions on this side. We've got a nice big bag of the casting plaster. We have got some plaster bandage. Now you don't use that for building the rock, you use that put the rocks onto the layout. So I'll put that to one side, we're not gonna need that at the moment. Uh, it comes with another mold, so that now means I've got three different molds that we can use. Uh, it comes with a piece of foam. I'm pretty sure that is for painting, but um, yeah, we might not use that. It comes with three little tubs of paint, different earth pigments, they call them, and a big old lollipop stick to stir it. Um, and, 13 steps I can see on the instructions on the inside there. Now a couple of things that you need that don't come in the pack, and there's only a couple of things. You need a water squirty bottle with some soap in it. So it's got a couple of drops of um, washing up liquid in there. And uh, just a spray trigger bottle. I'm gonna need a tub to mix my plaster in. Just an old um, food microwave or container type thing. Um, just gonna use them, just give it a bit of use. Uh, you need something to measure the plaster with. Now, this is where wooden scenes go and get all American on us because the instructions state, and um, there we go. So we need to add, primary focus, one third of a cup of water for every cup of the powder of the uh, it's hydrocolor, I believe it's called. And it's a lightweight plaster. Now, you might have some cup measuring cups at home. Um, I do, but my other half won't be very happy if I fill them with plaster. So I found a nice simple way to do it. I have some old shot glasses here. And basically what I do is it's telling us to use a third of a cup of water to a full cup. So all I'm going to do is I'm going to use three cups of the plaster to one cup of water. Hopefully that makes sense. So the only other thing that we need is something to rest these moulds on. Now, so all I use is just some offcuts of polystyrene. And basically, put one at that side, one at that side, rest the mould on it, like that. And it'll just help hold it in place. So the first thing it's telling me to do in the instructions is to spray each of the moulds with this soap and water mixture. Um, so we we'll give them all a nice wetting. Um, I think we all know when you work with plaster, it's always good to have wet surfaces. Um, now I don't want these to be swamped, but I don't want them to be wet, so I'm gonna slightly over wet them. And then before I put the plaster in, I'll just tip any excess water out, because what I don't wanna do is them to dry out while I'm working on mixing the plaster. So 
we'll leave them to one side for a minute. Now the next thing we'll do is take my tub and to my tub I'm going to grab my plaster and it's telling me in the instructions that I need to shake the plaster for 30 seconds. So here's the tub of plaster and I'm going to shake it for 30 seconds. Okay, so that's 30 seconds. That shook the life out of it. Um, it's quite hard to get it to move down in the bag for me to actually find a place to cut the bag open. So this could be interesting. Grab some scissors. Attempt it to make a hole in the top of the bag. Um, Off. Now, I am going to use, I don't know how much I'm going to need, that's the problem. Uh, it's always weird with these things, it doesn't actually tell you how much you need. So I'm going to start by measuring out six cups. Okay, so I've measured out there six cups, shot glasses of plaster. So, next thing we need is to add so for every one cup we add a third of a cup i've added six cups so that's two cups of water so into it and then it tells me as soon as i add that water i need to let it stand for two minutes and then stir it for one minute so it seems weird that you wouldn't mix it ah okay i've just spotted what i've done wrong i'll be back in a second Okay, this is where things go wrong when you don't read the instructions properly. I believe what I'm supposed to do is have the water first and then sprinkle the plaster on top, then leave it for two minutes and then stir it for a minute. So, fresh tub, and actually, I'm going to chicken out. I'm only going to use half of that mixture. So, I'm going to take one cup of water into there, and then I'm going to add dry fingers. Three cups of plaster sprinkled onto the top. Straight them. And then I'm going to leave it for two minutes. And after the two minutes is up, we will stir it for one minute. So, two minutes. So that's two minutes up. Uh, now I need to stir it for one minute. So I've set a timer and I'm now going to stir it for a minute. So that is the timer. That's one minute done. So let's move this to one side. Let's grab my first mould. And that's nice and wet in there still. I'm just going to tip any excess water out. Again, that's why I'm doing this in the kitchen because it's nice and easy. And then I am just going to pour the pasta into it. I definitely gonna need more than what I made, so I probably should have made the double batch up straight away, but never mind, it's not a problem. So that's it. I'm just gonna give it a kind of a jiggle and a wiggle to get it where I want it into all the nooks and crannies, so to speak. I uh, just need a tiny drop more over this side, it's a bit thin. And a bit more down there as well. And then I'm going to grab the next mould again, get rid of the water out of it. And there isn't a huge amount left. So let's see if we can get this little one here done. Okay, so I've made up two mixtures and it hasn't filled all three moulds. I've got one, two, three small ones empty here, but I'm going to leave them there for now. I'm not mixing up a third load just for that. I'm going to leave them for 40 minutes, which is how long it is to leave them. And then it tells you to remove them from the mould and let them stand for at least eight hours. I'm not sure they're going to come out in 40 minutes, but if that's what the instructions say, then that's what we'll do. So I'll be back in 40 minutes. So I give them an extra five minutes. 45 minutes has passed and they feel touch dry now one of the things that might happen and i know this from previous experiences these might crack when i take them out 
uh, it's just the nature of plus so there's nothing you can do about it it's not a problem because when I put these on the layout what I'm going to be doing is put them together like a jigsaw puzzle uh, so little pieces is fine we'll keep everything other than the tiniest of bits um, and we'll put them together now the easiest way I've found to take these out of the moulds is to get a hold of both sides of the mould and pull it apart like this you can see the mould there is just coming away you can also see I'll get this in camera as I'm pulling it there's a crack there so I'm going to lose that bit that's fine even if it cracked across the middle again that's still fine it's not a problem we can use all these pieces now remember this is not going to be fully dry yet this is going to need overnight to fully cure but A little bit of patience needed with this as well. Just keep playing it around. Voila! We then have a rock face. Now, there's a little bit there that I don't want, I'm just going to scrape that off the top, just like that. Now, this is still really brittle at the moment, so it's definitely going to need plenty of time to dry. But um, let me get the others out. Uh, I'm going to cast a few more, um, keep them going 45 minutes, keep churning them out because I want loads of these to work with. Um, and then I will come back to you once I've got all the different pieces. So I'll be back shortly. So it's the next day, we're back up in the loft and as you can see I've made three of these um, style rock faces, three of these style rock faces and a whole load of bits of rock and this stuff is so light I can't tell you how light it is so that's really really fantastic okay so here we are at the layout and we need to rewind a little bit if you've watched my last video um, where I put the landscapes in place because this was filmed before that was put in place as part of the process of doing it but that video is out you'll find that on my channel so you can take a look at that now here we come out the tunnel mouth and we're going to have a nice sloping bank with a few rocks in coming along here and then as we get further along here towards where the road is we're going to move to a much sharper rock face here with some debris in front of it we then got the road bridge here and the level crossing which is going to go here and then we'll continue around and here it's much shallower the space that i've got here than i've got here so if you remember i did two different types of rock so the bigger more chunkier rock is going to go this side and the much thinner rock if you look at the profiles on them together you can see the difference so this thinner one is going to be going on this side over here now we've got the walls to go in here for the um the retaining walls for the bridge and then the rock work now you can see instantly that this is far too big because of the tracks that are behind it and also we're on an incline on this side as well so we've got that to think about and on this side again it's far too big so for those double old modelers that are watching this you can see one of these is going to be quite big um, even for you to work in double old now all I'm going to do is I'm going to put a base layer of Band, plaster bandage down now these will break really really easily um, I've, I've got three of these they're all identical so I need to mix it up and I'm going to just basically snap them in half now that's how easy it is to snap them in half take bits off the top and then we're just going to glue them in place a bit like a jigsaw there will be gaps between them but let me get that done so given all of the area that the rocks are going to be going uh, um, covering with the plaster bandage and remember you get that roll of plaster bandage included in the Woodland Scenics Learning Kit um, I'm working on a bigger area at the moment so I had some other plaster bandage of my own so I've, it doesn't really matter which one you use it all does the same job so basically I've got plaster bandage right along here up to the bridge and then from this side of the bridge from where the retaining wall ends again we've got plaster bandage along here um it was done last night so it's still a little bit damp um but i need it to be wet so other tools that i have to use he says as he grabbed one is my water spray bottle a just a plastic cup of water with an old stiffish brush in there 
a trowel, oh scraper, it's actually a wallpaper scraper, and some ready mixed smooth filler. Now this doesn't come with the wooden scenic kit, so you could just use glue or you could just use the wet plaster cloth. Um, what they tell you to do is to take a piece of plaster cloth, fold it up, wet it, stick it on there, and then stick your piece of rock to it. Much better. Now you need to remember you need wet surfaces with this, you need things to adhere. Uh, so if I grab a piece of the rock that I'm going to be using, for example, that piece is going to be sitting in there. So what I will do is I will put wet that just with a squirty bottle put wet the back of the rock and then grab some filler put that oh sorry i just hit the camera put the filler always hard to do this and filling it at the same time on the back like that to use as a glue that'll also fill in any gaps that are left and then simply stick that into place and then what I can do is any filler that squirts out just get the wet brush and just dab it down Okay, so that is all of this section leading up to the bridge complete. Um, that, hopefully you can see from the last video, it was quite sped up, but basically it's like building a jigsaw, so you just break them, all the big rocks up into little pieces of rock and then just slot them together wherever they'll fit. And by using the filler and a wet paint brush and sometimes putting a little bit of filler on the brush as well, you can just push bits of filler in any gaps that don't look very natural, um, just to kind of bring the jigsaw together now that looks a little bit white cliffs of dover at the moment um but i'm going to crack on i'm going to get the rest of the rocks put into place uh and then this is going to need quite a while to dry um because i'm putting it on wet plaster cloth uh and the rocks and i'm also doing some of the scenic work at the same time i'm probably going to give this at least two or three days to start to dry before i do the next step and all of the rocks are all now nicely set into place they're all nice and solid uh, they go all the way around so they start here where they blend in and then they go nice and solid right the way up here and all that filler i used has just kind of sealed all the gaps all the way around them so they're nice and secure we've also got over here all of these rocks in place as well and then i've added a couple of other extra areas as well if i just pan the camera around if it'll go that far it won't so let me move it around i've also created a rocky area on the side of this tunnel as well as some other areas on the layout uh, so the next job is to get them painted the three sets of pigments that came in the um, rock faces learning kit uh, so we need three of them we need three cups um, I've just got three plastic cups here we need some water to dilute the pigments and then it, the kit comes with this piece of form for you to dip into the pigments and then apply the color um, but I have some of these in the house and these are, do the same job but they're a little bit easier to use so basically what I'm going to do is I'm going to use you have to have according to the instructions um, two secondary colours and a primary colour. So these two browns are going to be my secondary colours and the black is going to be my primary colour. So apparently what I do is mix these up. Now these two need to be one part paint to 16 parts water and then the black ones to be twice as weak. So one part paint to 32 parts water. So we'll mix them up and then we use what they call, I think they call it the leopard method. So really annoyingly I've just painted the part that I said I would show you how I was going to paint it and then realised I hadn't pressed record on the camera. Um, so I've got another area over here uh, which is going to have a small rocky area just here. Um, so I'll show you on that what 
you've missed under the clip. So starting with the lightest colour, all I've done is I've gone over and just dabbed one third of the rocks like that. Then I moved on to the darker brown and again just go over the rocks again in hitting the white areas. I didn't get I don't know if there's a bit of white still shown. And then I've actually created a third colour because the rocks were far too light for my liking. Um, so I just used some artist acrylic and some water to create a grey wash. And then I've gone over them with the grey wash straight on the top to tone that down and bring it together. And I've gone over with that grey basically on the whole thing um, and quite heavily so that the browns become an under colour and the grey is the more prominent colour on top of it. Um, so I'm going to leave them to dry. I have got scenic cement, so I'll then spray them with some scenic cement and then I'll go over the top with a black wash um, to bring it all together. So I'll be back with you and I will remember to press record um, on the final step. Okay, so all of that rock work has um, had the three coats uh, plus the extra grey coat that I added on as well. Um, I left that to dry, it didn't take very long to dry at all. And then I hit it all with some scenic um, cement it sealed it and then the final job is the black wash that we had and all we're going to do is exactly the same as we did but we want to make sure we cover everything this time and it needs to be nice and wet because what we want is all that black to run into all the little crevices so that it brings out all the shadows in all them dark bits relatively happy with how it's turning out. If I move the camera around, I did the other stones a little bit earlier and they are already almost dry. So you can see these along. So that's all the washers dry. Uh, you'll probably also notice since the last clip that I've painted the area around the rocks as well to be um, brown earth tone because I'm working on the other areas at the same time. Uh, final job is I just want to pick out, and this isn't something Woodland Scenic tell you to do, but it is something I'm going to do. I'm just going to dry brush the rocks, the edges of the rocks. So I've got a flat brush with just some white acrylic paint and then I'm just going to knock off as much of the paint as possible um, and then I'm just going to lightly hit over the very very edges of the rocks color better so once you've got the dry brushing in the very final job is just to add a little bit of greenery now we can add more when we come on to do more scenic work but I want a little bit on now just to start with and all I'm going to do is just it's hot here today it's 20 by 25 degrees in the loft so this that white dry brush and I'll dry pretty much straight away so all I've got here just move the camera it's just some PVA this is speed bond PVA because that was just what I grabbed and all I'm going to do is just look at them and look at pictures of real rocks and work out where you would get bits of grass and things growing. Now this is in the UK, it's pretty damp uh, and anywhere where collected water would definitely have greenery uh, growing on it. So places like this ledge here is a prime example and especially at this back because the water would run backwards. So I'm just going to put on a little bit of PVA wherever I think you would get greenery. And to that, I'm just going to add, I've got three different Woodland Scenics products there. Uh, I've got a fine green grass, I've got an earth blend, and I've got a medium green coarse turf. And I'm just going to take a pinch, sprinkle that on. And then I'm just going to add a little bit, because that's quite a big area on there. I'm going to add a little bit of the coarse turf as well. Now some of this will grab the PVA that's underneath. For the rest of it we will glue it down just using the usual method of and that's when this is going to fly away when i do this but don't worry about that quick spray from a distance of ipa and just a couple of small drops of diluted 50 50 water and pva with a drop of dishwasher detergent so washing up liquid and then we'll just leave that 
to dry. There we go. Um, so I'm going to do the rest of these. I want a few, a few more bits of greenery. We'll leave it overnight for the glue to fully dry, and then I'll show you some pictures of the finished item. So I'll be back in just a sec. And that is the job done. That's all the rocks in place, painted, and got a little bit of green around there. Now remember, I can always add more once I get the rest of the landscapes in around here. I can decide if I want to add more to it, but for now, I'm happy with how that's looking. Um, so I'm going to leave this video here. In my next video, I'm going to be turning my attention, I'm not sure which video is going to be first, but it'll either be the road that's going to go through this area with a level crossing, uh, or it'll be the track detailing through this area here as well, um, both of which need to be done quite soon. But as always guys, a huge thank you for your support, a massive thank you to the new and old subscribers alike, I really do appreciate you following along uh, on my journey as I build this layout. And uh, if it's always, if you've got any comments, any suggestions, any thoughts, feel free to pop them in the notes down below. And um, I will see you in the next video. Thanks, guys. Take care. Bye bye.